Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and I'm here to show you two new features we've added in Dorico 3.5 to help you with your part preparation. Firstly, we now support the Hollywood-style part convention of filling the final page of a layout with blank staves. This convention started before computerized copying, when pre-ruled manuscript paper was being used, and there was no particular concern for whether the cue finished at the end of a page. In more recent years, some music preparation houses have chosen to manually emulate this aspect of hand-copied parts because it can be useful for players to have space to be able to make notes and write in any changes or additions that arise during the recording session. This behavior is controlled by way of layout options in the Page Setup category under Flows. Simply enable the Fill Frame with Blank Staves option and press Apply. You can also choose to show blank staves using the system arrangement currently in use. See this harp part example where the staves are arranged as a grand staff. And there's a further option to include or exclude clefs. The other new feature will help when creating parts of wind and concert bands and uh, other ensembles with some flexibility in the instrumentation where you may be required to provide parts for the same instrument, but written in a variety of transpositions. Start by creating a new part layout in setup mode and assigning the relevant instrument to it. If you've made substantial changes to the original layout, you may wish to use propagate part formatting to ensure the new part looks the same as the original. I would also suggest renaming the layouts to include the instrument transposition so that you can tell which is which when printed. By default, it is the layout name that is shown at the top of the instrumental part layouts. So changing the name of the layout will reflect in the part. You can use tokens in layout names, for example, this one to include a flat sign. With the part now created, right click it in the list and choose clef and transposition overrides. Now you can choose to enable an override for the clef, an override for the transposition, or both, and even do this for concert pitch scores where you may need to specify an octave transposition. For example, a double bass should be set to C3 here and a piccolo to C5. The list at the top of the dialog updates to show the changes that will be made when you press OK. I do hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please click the thumbs up button below to let me know you've liked it and subscribe to the Dorico YouTube channel today to see many more videos like this one. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.